Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of the Beaver News. I'm Conrad Cartmel. And I'm Dana Delgado. Thanks for joining us this evening. Our first story tonight is one that will tug at your heartstrings. OSU is widely known for its large animal veterinary hospital, but this past week they had some unexpected patients. 175 malnourished and injured alpacas were rescued from a local farm last week and are now here at the Oregon State Veterinary Hospital being nursed back to health. Holly Clausen has the full story. Weak, dirty, sick. Just a few of the words used to describe the dozens of alpacas that arrived at the OSU Veterinary Hospital located at Magruder Hall. Well, the group that we have in here were uh, seized by the Polk County Sheriff's Department uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, they uh, took legal, legal ownership of the animals about a week ago, and at that point uh, they had to move the animals off their original property. And so uh, they had plans to take them to another property, but that fell through, and so we received them here at that time. The alpacas, which were kept in poor condition on a farm in the Williamette Valley, are now being treated by OSU Veterinary Department for various health issues, as described by Zebra. We have some individuals that actually don't look too bad, but then we have quite a few that are very thin. Uh, they have dental issues, they've got parasite issues, they have uh, some foot problems in some cases. Some of them have some other individual animal issues like lamenesses or tooth abscesses. Um, but then there are a few that are in decent body condition. Uh, the good news is that they're all fairly bright and uh, they're appearing to like their food. They've taken to it very well and they are um, uh, fairly eager, eagerly eating here. Despite the challenges that face the animals over the next few weeks, the staff is hopeful for a full recovery. Well, we've done pretty well so far. Uh, you know, knock on wood, uh, we haven't lost a single one that's come here yet. Uh, and the ones that we have, for the most part, uh, really seem like they're doing well. So um, we're pretty confident that, that the majority of them will do really well, and we're hopeful that the rest will do well as also. After treatment, Cross Creek Alpaca Rescue will be handling the eventual adoption of the animals to farms such as these. I'm Holly Clausen, and this has been what you need to know. It's really incredible what a great vet hospital we have here at OSU. They're doing great work. Stay with us, and we'll be right back after a quick break. Everyone has friends. There's online friends. Friends to go out with on a Saturday night. Friends to hang out with and do nothing. Friends who show up on moving day. And then there are the friends who will be there if someone is dealing with a mental illness. Are you one of those friends? Listen, I know you're upset, but it was just one date. And dating's like the stock market. Uh, there's uh, ups and, and downs and, and, and ups. And So always buy low. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who would love to put up with you. All surely aware, Valentine's Day is upon us. While there are lots of ways to express your love for the people in your life, there are a number of events going on and around Oregon State campus in the spirit of the holiday. Although signups are now closed, there is a kiss off being held at the Beaver Store tomorrow. Contestants will try and hold a Valentine's box between their lips as long as possible. The couple that holds the box the longest will receive two iPad minis. Drop in at 2 p.m. to cheer on the teams as they try to win through the power of love. Although sending Valentine's cards is an honored tradition, sending physical cards does use up a lot of paper. So as a part of Recycle Mania 2014, you can replace physical cards with e-cards for your loved ones. Go check out the campus recycling page for more information as well as to see the cards. In other kissing-related news, Chipotle has a special Valentine's promotion running Friday. The rules are pretty simple. Kiss someone Chipotle and get a free burrito. It's not complicated, and we would encourage all of our viewers who are comfortable with such things to go collect some free food. Last, but certainly not least, to top off, be, 
being known by most as Valentine's Day. February 14th, it also doubles as National Condom Day. So you can head down to the MU Quad between 11.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. to pick up some free supplies for the holiday festivities, as well as informational packets and cards. As always, stay safe and have fun on the most romantic holiday of the year. Everyone on campus is aware that the crane has been working on the construction site for the new Student Experience Center. And as of, the fame continues to grow, so does the movement behind it. We've been following the story as it has developed, and here to tell you about the latest events surrounding the crane is Hayden Wilcox. Oregon State University has a new celebrity on campus. And no, it's not an athlete. It's not a faculty member. Instead, it's a piece of equipment. And whether they like it or not, every student at Oregon State's campus has heard of the MU crane. It can be seen from just about anywhere on campus. A giant metal spire in the sky dominates the cloud-covered backdrop. Um, the crane? It's tall. And I mean, it's doing a good job. It's just kind of always been there. You know, I think it does good work making buildings. It's always watching. That's, what do you mean by that? It's always, it's always watching. It's literally that. It's always there. People are kind of enamored with it for some reason. Some see it as a tool, others an eyesore, and yet others view it as a deity? You know, I've heard a lot of things about the MU crane. Uh, I'm never supposed to doubt it. Do I doubt the crane? I have full faith in the crane. I've seen the cult following of it. It's probably one of the funniest things that I've heard about. Never doubt the crane. Craze over the MU crane has swept through campus, but what comes next? We sat down with Michael McDonald, co-creator of the MU Crane Facebook page, to figure out how this crane cult rose to popularity so quickly. I had taken a picture of this crane that was by the MU doing some construction, and when I arrived at class, I noticed that a friend of mine, uh, Isabel, had also taken a picture of the crane, and we had applied almost the exact same Instagram filter to it, as the exact same angle. I made this Facebook page for the crane as kind of just a joke, haha. -ha sent it to a few of them, and I think by the end of that class, we had about 40 or 50 likes for the page. And so Zach and I uh, immediately kind of thought like, wow, this is, this could be really something. This is kind of funny. We should, you know, kind of push it further to see what can happen. I think I was the first person to start sort of talking about it in sort of that elevated like status. And then that, that voice, that kind of like positive, supportive voice sort of turned into like the idea behind all of what we've been doing. We posted a few funny images, some, some motivational pictures I think you probably saw. Next thing you know, by that night, we had 350 likes the first night. The next day after that, we had positive growth of about 1,200 likes. And that's when we really started getting serious and thinking, OK, there's a lot of positive support for this. What can we do? What's the next thing? What's the next thing? Followers of the MU Crane took the original concept and ran with it, creating MU Crane themed artwork and even their own crane salute to identify themselves as true crane supporters. To us, the crane is a tool for getting a job done, so it's nice that they have something to rally around and, and come together about, but um, we, we still see it as a tool to get the job done. So It's just a piece of construction equipment. I don't really get it, but you know what? Why not? I think it's a little bit of nonsense. <laughs> Taking advantage of the crane's newfound popularity, McDonald and Aidsvok decided to solidify this cloud scraping icon as a symbol for the community and the support that has rallied behind it. The two created an Indiegogo page in an attempt to erect a statue of the crane inside the Student Experience Center. People who pledge a certain amount of money can get their name put on the plaque that will be uh, uh, adorned to the statue. So students can say, hey, I was there when that happened. This whole craziness happened. They can. I mean, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a fantasy, they can bring their kids back to the campus and say, look, there's this whole wacky experience. I was here, I was at Oregon State, and this is the really positive experience we all had. But for Michael and Zach, the MU Crane Project represents a connection to the community that will stand long after the crane leaves. I don't know, just feeling like, feeling like we were connecting with that many of our peers in a way that, like, made people happy and made people smile. I think that was the best part for me. Yeah, really, like, being a part of something that, that is part of this larger community, not just our class or our college or, or whatever, it's actually across this whole campus, and to see something where someone can come up to you and be like, hey, have you heard about that crane thing? And can be like, yeah, I definitely heard about that crane thing. The Indiegogo page closed at 12 o'clock midnight on Friday, and at the time of its close, has raised over $4,500 towards the MU Crane Fund.
For the Beaver News, this has been Hayden Wilcox, never doubting the crane. The guys from the MU Crane are also going to be sending out Valentine's Day e-cards tomorrow. We'll be right back in just a minute. So you can't save money? This is easy as pie. Drink from the tap. A $3 bottle of water a day times 10 years times 6% interest is over 14,000 grams. Small changes today, big bucks tomorrow. Feedthepig.org. <laughs> Dad, you want me to get the phone? Yeah. If you're ignoring your mortgage issues, things will only get worse. Call today, because nothing is worse than doing nothing. These kids almost had a new community center. A contractor almost volunteered to build it. A carpenter almost worked on the crew. And everyone else almost gave at the fundraiser. They almost gave. Almost. And these kids, well, they almost stayed out of trouble. Welcome back to the Beaver News. Thanks for staying with us. We all know that the weather was a little bit dramatic this last week, but here at Oregon State, we always managed to ride out the storm. Although we're always ready to get up and go, rain or shine, even we sometimes need a little extra information to keep us in the loop. Here to get us up to date on the latest climatic news is the appropriately named Aubrey Valentine. Hey there, I'm Aubrey Valentine. Thanks for tuning in to this week's weathercast. So far this week we've had an average temperature of 48 degrees and some slight showers. Let's see how the next few days will be. Last Thursday, campus was closed due to a large snowfall that lasted through Saturday morning. The volume of snow and ice that fell caused many trees on campus to fall over, blocking roads and walkways. Many in the Corvallis and surrounding areas were without power and were unable to drive in the snow. Thankfully, most of the snow cleared up by Monday and it was business as usual on campus. Earlier this week, we've seen gray skies and showers, which is expected to continue throughout Friday and the weekend, so you may want to reconsider those outdoor Valentine's Day plans. Make sure to stay dry, OSU. That's it for this week. Thanks for listening. Keep your days glistening. I'm Aubrey Valentine. See you next week. Well, we can only hope the rain stays away this weekend and we get a little sunshine for Valentine's Day. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the sun. How did you deal with the snow? You know, I stayed in for the first couple days and tried to just go with it, but I swear by the third or fourth I was ready to get out of the house. I was sick of being trapped. <laughs> yeah, I had a lot of work to do over the first part of the uh, break. and. Honestly, staying inside for that long really gets old very fast. Yeah, I probably should have been studying, but I really just ended up watching movies, so it wasn't super productive for me. <laughs> mm, well, sounds like a good time anyway. It was. All righty, well, we will be right back after a quick break. Campuses Take Charge is dedicated to making OSU one of the most energy-efficient campuses in the nation, and we need your help. I take charge. I take charge. I take charge. I'm a fourth year engineering student. I'm a senior instructor of geosciences at OSU. I'm the OSU sustainability coordinator. And I take charge by eating vegan. I take charge by raising my golden chickens for eggs. I take charge by meeting 100% of my home's needs with photovoltaic panels. I'm the Student Diversity Budget and Co-Chair, and I take charge by buying in bulk. How do you take charge? Visit EnergizeCorvallis.org and pick three energy-saving actions to try for one month. At the end of the month, give us feedback about your actions, and we'll send you a coupon card for local Corvallis businesses. Take charge! In a continuation of our Valentine's Day coverage, we sent Madeline Lee out to ask Oregon State students about their plans for the holiday, as well as what they knew about its history in our recurring segment, Questions in the Quad. As we all know, Valentine's Day is tomorrow, so we asked students what Valentine's Day means to them and where they think Valentine's Day comes from. Ben, what do you think of Valentine's Day? I think Valentine's Day is fun. It's um, just a way to kind of show some love, get a get together with somebody you like and have a have a good day. I would say the most important part about Valentine's Day to me is uh, 
been able to show my girlfriend, who we've actually been dating for three years, um, it's about being able to show her how I actually feel about her. And uh, I get to take her out to where we first met. And uh, it's my one time, of, one time of year to shine. So it's, uh, I don't know, it's just about showing love, you know? It's a special day for you guys. Where's that special spot for you? Uh, it's top secret. You don't want to tell us? I can't tell you guys. Good time for couples to spend time together and a good time for people that aren't in a relationship to be sad and lonely, so. Which one are you doing this year? Probably going to be sad and lonely. This year I have a friend who is taking me and his girlfriend out on a bro date and we're all <laughs> going to go out to dinner and watch a cheesy Valentine's Day movie. So it sounds like you have a significant other. What are you doing this year? Um, we're not really sure. I think we're just going to go out to dinner or something, um, get some roses and stuff like that. And yeah. What do you think is like the perfect gift to give her? Ooh, that's tough. I think, I think it's something that's sweet and just like tell them how much you appreciate them, whether it's like through writing or a card or something like that mm -hmm. or flowers or whatever. And I'm going to try and find a date before Friday, hopefully, because, I don't know, spending it alone would be just kind of depressing. Right. Well, where are you going to look? Well, uh, I got a couple hopefuls I'll text to see what goes on with that. I don't know. couple girls, okay. Yeah. My uh, girlfriend, so she's coming down from uh, Western Washington, so it'll be good to, like, to spend time with her. So. What do you guys have planned to do? Uh, going to the Tokyo Steakhouse for dinner, so, yeah. Giving her a little spoiler a little bit, so, <laughs> yeah. Going to do that. Never been there before, so. Try it out. Do you know where Valentine's Day comes from? Uh, I'm going to say no on that one. Take a guess. Uh, I'm assuming it was made by the Hallmark Company <laughs> to get their greeting cards out better. Uh, St. Valentine? I don't know. What do you think like he did? Take a wild guess if you don't know. Uh, I'm guessing, I think he was the guy who sent, maybe it was St. Patrick. I think he was the guy that sent letters from jail and they're like love letters. I think so. It has to do with that little angel Cupid. I'm pretty sure it was like the angel of love or something. Shooting his arrow in people's butts and I don't know, doing something like that. <laughs> Maybe like some really rich guy like bought his wife like a car or like <laughs> back in the day and then it started from there. I believe it is from St. Valentine back in Rome. And if I remember correctly, he married soldiers that uh, couldn't be married and then he was imprisoned for it. Good, that's the best guess yet. Whew. Nice job. Thank you. Today we found out that Oregon State students love to love and although they know who St. Valentine is, they don't know exactly what he did. I'm Madeline Lee and this is Questions in the Quad. Happy Valentine's Day. I love hearing about what people have planned for tomorrow. Are you doing anything? Well, I actually do have some plans. I'm going to go on a date with this girl that I just met, so that's going to be pretty fun. Ooh, where are you guys going? Uh, I actually haven't told her yet, so it's kind of a surprise. Does she know she's going on a date? Yeah, she knows she's oh, going okay. on a date. Okay, that's a good start. <laughs> so do you have any plans for Valentine's Day? Um, I think my boyfriend and I, I think we're just going to cook dinner and lay low, but we actually just found out we get to puppy sit tomorrow. One of our friends has a little... Um, German short hair pointer puppy, so we're going to be puppy sitting all night, so I'm actually pretty excited about that. That's actually really cool. Right? I mean, everyone kind of loves puppies and right? it's Valentine's Day. Oh, that's romantic, Sounds really right? Sounds romantic. <laughs> okay, have you, ever, have you ever donated clothes to a homeless shelter or made sure that your purchases were ethical and sustainable? Our fashion reporters Stephanie and Julia talked to campus representative for 31 Bits about their efforts to bring the worlds of charity and fashion together. Trending at OSU, I'm Julia Cameron. And I'm Stephanie Paul. Tonight we take a look at fashion for good. Instead of looking at regular merchandise, we look at fashion that makes a difference. Molly works with the organization 31 Bits. And how did you get involved with the company? Um, well, a friend from PSU, one of my close friends, worked with them last term. And so uh, she kind of told me about them and I got interested and applied myself. What does 31 bit stand for? So the 31 comes from Proverb, Proverbs 31, um, and it talks about a woman providing for her family. And then the bits um, refers to the bits and pieces of the recycled paper um, that the bracelets are made from. So what exactly does the organization benefit? Well, it benefits um, women in Uganda who make the bracelets, um, and they're hired each month. Um, and they're given a set number of bracelets to make, so they have a set income for that month. 
Um, and they made the ones I'm wearing now. And all the bracelets are made in Uganda by the women, so that's kind of cool. What types of fashion or jewelry do you guys sell? Um, well, 31 Bits sells bracelets, necklaces, um, bags, and they also have a bridal line. Mm -hmm. But for now, I just have the bracelets, um, but then every month I get a new product. And I like that 31 Bits is socially conscious, and so the money that is sold from the bracelets goes towards the women, and not only um, just like the money towards them, but helps them with classes um, to learn how to like manage money and um, yeah. Wow, what great organizations to get involved with. Yeah, it's really cool how people can use fashion to support a good cause. Well, that's all the time we have for you guys tonight. I'm Stephanie Paul and I'm Julia Cameron. Keep it couture, Corvallis. There are many different outlets for relieving stress in school. We talked to one student about how he finds release through his art form, ceramics. The Cross Center campus is open for all students interested in ceramics, but for Miles Dunfield, it's his home away from home. This is an outlet, you know, everyone uses outlets to go to to de-stress and uh, just be comfortable and calm. And I think obviously a lot of times we're studying, um, we don't always have set schedule, we're kind of running around left and right, and it's not just to come in here and just calm down and just really just be in touch with something besides like having your mind all scattered and everything. I connect while I'm doing it, more so than the final product. Um, when I'm throwing on the wheel, I'm really in tune with my whole body. Um, I'm putting my whole effort into what I'm making, and so I can find a balance within that. Um, obviously, I get out a final piece, and, and I can relate to the pieces I've made it, and it's the final product, so it shows how I how I can finish a piece and all that. But in the end, it's really about the process of it all and what goes into it through my own emotions. And I think that's the biggest thing. It's heat of the moment, um, me being involved right then and there. And also, as I work with it, I can almost feel like what the clay wants to do. And so I'll allow it to do that, and then I'll end up with a piece in there. I don't really know what I'm going to throw. That's half the beauty of it. I'm going to get on there, and I'm going to do what my what I'm, my brain really thinks of at that moment, in the moment. Just in the end, if like if you have that creative mentality and you and you haven't really been able to express it, and you're looking and you're searching, come in here, and you're on. We have a bunch of open studio hours and stuff that um, promotes that. And I think um, having that having that be all those open studio hours, it really lets people just come in and do their own thing. And that's the beauty of this place. And that's the beauty of art is you know you do your own thing. And there's no there's no strict regiment schedule. It's it's all you. And uh, I like that. I love it. It's the best part of art. <laughs> You are welcome to stop by any time and check it out. This is Mario Sibuye with KBVR News. Stay tuned after the break for a story on how art finds its way onto OSU's campus. Mini bars right over there. Phone if you need to use it. Bed. And what is that? Oh, that's a double chin. Ugh. The guy who checked out must have uh, lost it just snacking on fruits and vegetables. Have a good stay. Me and my friends are close and we all believe in each other. I know they could graduate even if it takes them longer. In the four years. We have classes together, so we study together, we help each other at our homework. Realized we messed up in the past. I failed a couple classes before, not doing as much work as I should be doing. My two best friends, they keep me working hard. Welcome back to the Beaver News. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a campus DJ? Ashley Van Pelt talks to DJ Ooh about what inspires him to do his show. All right, that was a new one from the Radicals. That song is called Heartburn up there. Everything from the 70s to early 90s, DJ Dr. U showcases his taste in punk rock music. Drew, a sophomore here at OSU, is no stranger to KBVR College Radio Station on campus. I was interested in college radio before I even decided which college I wanted to go to, so um, I knew that um, my dad had went here and he said he liked listening to KBVR in the 80s, so 
he said it was a pretty cool thing and uh, I should think about getting involved with it. So uh, when I got here last year as a freshman, it was like one of the first things I wanted to do. His love for punk rock was introduced to him at an early age by listening to Blink-182. I got into Blink-182, my friend showed me them, like, not when they were popular, like after they were popular. Um, and they're, they kind of got me into it. They have a lot of relatable lyrics, like for like growing up and stuff. So when I was like in junior high and high school, it really resonated with me and that's what, that's what, uh, that's what got me into it, um, and then just more music like that. DJ Dr. U mixes up his playlist every week. Today, uh, since it's um, almost Valentine's Day, I did a list of some of my favorite punk rock love songs. Um, I try to do, whenever there's a reason to do a theme, I try to do a theme. It makes it like more of an interesting show rather than just like a random mix every like week. You can turn to 88.7 FM to listen to Dr. U's Punk Rock Show every Wednesday at 11. This has been Ashley Van Pelt with your Beaver News. Have you ever noticed all of the art on campus, like the sculptures in front of Research Stadium and the Kelly Engineering Center? It luckily isn't our tuition dollars paying for these pieces. It's the National Endowment for the Arts. Since the initiation of the Percent for Art program in 1975, large state-funded building projects are required to spend 1% of total construction costs on art. This means that for the new Student Experience Center, $330,000 will be spent solely on art. So the next time you happen to be wondering why there are murals inside of the MU or why there's a giant metal football outside the stadium, that would be the reason. We check in with one fraternity about how they celebrate Valentine's Day. Here with a story is Lindsay Spino. The Sigma Phi Epsilon fraternity is having their annual Sweethearts Philanthropy this week. Each day entails a different event allowing participants to gain points in hopes of winning the competition. Welcome to the Sweethearts 2014 date auction. Very exciting. Um, we've got, I think, around 10 to 12 fun dates that uh, you guys get to bid on to a picnic at Chimney with Kenai the house dog. Right? <laughs> Items being auctioned, including quality time with the fraternity members on group dates and weekend getaways. Looks great. Where's white shoes? What's all that's all about? It happened. Okay, 65. We're looking at 70. 70 out there. 70, there we go. Okay. The funds raised go towards Habitat for Humanity, and at this event last night, $3,500 was raised. This is Lindsay Spino with Beaver News. Well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. Thanks again for watching. To stay posted on the Beaver News, watch us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter at Beaver News. I'm Conrad Cartmel. And I'm Dana Delgado. We hope you all have a great weekend and a happy Valentine's Day. See you next week.